and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Every day we stand in an epic spiritual battle between good and evil, and safety is of the Lord. This is Truth Dealer Radio. Warning believers to wake up and be sober, encouraging believers to stand on the Word of God, and motivating believers to be truth dealers with a bold witness for Jesus Christ in these end times. And now the host of Truth Dealer Radio, Brian Moonen. It's Truth O'Clock. Praise God. Welcome back to Truth Dealer Radio, where no matter what time zone you're in, it's Truth O'Clock. I'm Brian Moon, and I'm here sounding the alarm, asking you to wake up and join the battle for truth. Of course, the truth is God's word. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, Hebrews 4.12. This week we have part two of our interview with Hepzibah House survivor Susan Grady. If you have not yet heard part one, I suggest you go back and listen to that for context. This is a very serious subject, some heavy information, listener discretion is advised, and now we will continue on with our interview, Susan Grady. There is a place for righteous indignation and yes, I agree. I be angry and sin not. And I'm angry at people that are physically assaulting little girls, causing them so much stress that they lose weight and they stop having their menstrual cycles. Yes, that happened. Yes. Do phys- I don't know what the labor was you were doing. I, I, I didn't really ask you to talk too much about what really happened yet. Yeah. I mean, it might just be... Scrubbing a brick floor for seven hours straight, you know, on your bare knees, stuff like that. We, sometimes with a toothbrush, if, if the staff deemed it, you know, reasonable. It, it wasn't about cleaning the floor. It was about... Where on earth, where do they get the scriptural justification for anything like that? That is so wicked. I... I don't know. I wish I understood. I wish I understood. And I wish as a Christian and as a conservative person, I wish I could sort it out in a way that was clear enough that I could tell, take it to these women who've been through this and show them where he's wrong. I think the main thing to understand is, is that it, it is just satanic. I mean, that's why we can't understand it. We have the Holy Spirit... Right. If it's not easy for me to understand at 53 years old, how can I explain it to these young women? They've been so traumatized, and we didn't talk about that, that all of the physical stuff at Hepzibah House is nothing compared to the emotional and spiritual abuse that goes on there. Give me an example of, yeah, what's an example of the... Emotional and spiritual abuse. That emotional might... and spiritual abuse. You, at 14 years old, you are already damaged goods, unworthy of God's best, but you can have his tenth best, maybe, possibly, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, you have to work really hard, you have to sacrifice everything, and, you know, you deserve all of the bad things that life has to offer you, and maybe if you endure that, maybe you can be redeemed. Um, wow, this is this is so disturbing. And this is the kind of attitude, this is what they would say, or this is just basically the underlying premise it, of all well, of they their would, They would say abuse. it every single day, every single minute. You are not worthy. You can't oh. work hard enough to become worthy. You can never deserve the best that God offers you can never amount to anything. You are so no good. The sick thing is that th- these are all true statements, but because of God's grace, that's the point. We're not good enough. We're not right. worthy, but God loved us while we were yet right. sinners. The hope right. is in God. The hope is right. not in our working to earn and to to get rid of his anger yeah. towards our sin or anything. J- Repent and believe, Jesus said. He preached yeah. the gospel. And, you yeah. know, all our hope is to be in him, mm-hmm. not in a system or a bunch of rules. God's mm-hmm. grace is free. 
He loves us. And that's what's yeah. so sick is they've, re- they've removed all the love and all the grace. All the love. And yet they use the same language. They use the same words, but they use them in, in this twisted way. And then they make these young girls write, memorize. Uh, I can practically quote the New Testament. Um, the memory work was just huge. And I'm grateful for it in some ways, but you, take, you, you use that as punishment you know, it was. That's what's so messed up. I'm sorry that they used scripture as a weapon to. Yes. With, I shouldn't say used. This is still going on. Um, mm-hmm. And that they used the Bible as. This is what's so satanic about it. And, it. and it's good that you were able to memorize scripture, but that's all the wrong reasons and all the wrong right. circumstances. But now God right. can use it, He'll use all things for good. And you have that hidden in your heart now, but um, I just thank God that you're not bitter and um, that you're able to look back now and pray for these people and that you're trying to get the truth out there and help yeah. the girls that come out. I don't know how I've heard some of them just get kind of dropped off on the corner. And some do, yeah. What do they do? Um, most likely they get into trouble. Um, not only do they get dropped off the corner, but they have no education. Usually don't have, or at least in our day, nowadays you get a social security number when you're born, but I had no social security number, no job experience. I cowered. I, I was terrified of people. Um, you know, I had been beaten into such a submissive thing that I was a target for any predator that, you know, they, I was just like, had a bullseye on my back. And then I had no money, no means to get a job, nothing. I didn't have a driver's license. What do you think happened? I ended up living on the street. And I ended up in a homeless shelter. Um, you know, it is a miracle of the grace of God. I am no better than any of the other Hephzibah women. God plucked me from the burning. And I am married. I have 13 children. My husband is a good man. I've homeschooled, you know, and then Ron Williams calls me, 2008. He calls me up and he says, Susan, I heard you're a godly woman homeschooling your kids. Your husband's a deacon. Um, You know, I'm so proud of you. And, you know, for a minute, Brian, for a minute, I felt like my dad was patting me on the head. And he said, Susan, I need a favor from you. I need you to write me a statement saying that you were never abused at Hepzibah House and you never witnessed abuse at Hepzibah House. And I just, I couldn't say no to him. I couldn't, but I did. I said, um, you know, let me ask my husband. Let me talk to him about it. Give me, give me the name of your lawyer and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Well, he told me to send it straight to him and he would edit it for me. Um, And then I got off the phone with him, and I was very, very upset. I was very upset, A, that I felt like a 10-year-old child again, and I was afraid and also yearning to give him the statement he wanted from me. I don't know where that came from. (laughs) Well, it's your guilt because this is what cults do. They demand your loyalty, and Uh they they deceive you. The devil deceives you, and like any Mm -hmm. other... Like any other... um, cult you know i've i've heard about this and there was a documentary film made called join us about Mm -hmm. a cult that was led by a a strange man i'm not going to call him a pastor but these people you hear the same thing they felt this strange loyalty because they were brainwashed susan you were brainwashed by ron even after all those years it was it was a shocking thing that i and I felt that subservient to Yeah, him. he called up, and when you heard his voice and his ways, it triggered you. I guess. Yeah, fortunately, I didn't, you know, I, I, I knew, even when I was talking to him, I knew I wouldn't, but I couldn't say it to him. And, um, and then I did write a statement, but I sent it to the police instead, and I put it on, on a blog on the Internet instead, um, because I, these women, I... I really believe that God gave me the position Praise God. and the freedom that I could do this. And I started reaching out to these women, and at first it was five, you know, and then it was 
20 and then it was 100 and then now it's 250, a little more than 250 women have found me, have found the other members of our group and um, I just, I pray for them. I love them. Um, some of them, you can't even say the word Jesus to them because they're so traumatized and so afraid of Christians. That is and, that is what really makes me ill. Mm-hmm. And, and this is why I kept saying it's satanic because yeah. the devil's favorite thing might be to impersonate a man of God and to twist the word. Be. I mean, the, Satan, Satan, the first thing he did he didn't tell Eve in the Garden of Eden, there's no God, there's no such thing as God. Yeah. He took God's actual words and twisted them and turned Eve to just turn five degrees, you yeah. know, and sin against God, who she knew personally. And he didn't do it by saying, you know, there's no God or God. Right. And, and this is what he still does. He is behind the pulpits of many churches and it's hard to get people to understand that i've seen it for my own with my own eyes at churches sometimes where people if the pastor is doing something wrong the last thing that they think of is holding him accountable yeah it's like he's he's the leader of their whole life Mm -hmm. and they they don't understand that in the scripture much like how in the founding documents of america there are solutions for problems that come up. You know, if the government becomes tyrannical, we're supposed to change it and fix it. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, you know, the position of a man who is serving the flock as a pastor, he's supposed to be a servant, not ruling over everyone like a dictator. And there are qualifications that are supposed to be met. And if he goes against half or most of those qualifications, you're supposed to remove him in love and get a different person to be the pastor. And that is just unheard of. But this is the problem with, you know, I'm calling it the modern American church model. Mm -hmm. Getting back to Hepzibah House, your parents were the ones that picked you up when it was time for you to go? Yes. And then you, you somehow, you ended up not back at home, but going through. I went home first. But, you know, such a wedge had been driven between my parents and myself by Ron Williams. I didn't trust them. They didn't trust me. They thought I was weird. Um, They didn't understand why I was afraid of everything. I couldn't manage myself. I'd lived in such incredible structure that freedom was something, I mean, I was was falling apart. And they didn't know what to make of that. I, I just... You know, they expected me to come home and get a job and go to college and date a boy and get married. And I couldn't go to the bathroom without asking permission. Um, I oh. I didn't know how to feed myself. I didn't know how to decide what time to get up and what time to go to bed on my own anymore. I mean, I was just, I was like an infant. And um, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, they put me in, they put me in Bible college and I failed. I, I wasn't doing well, and, um, you know, one little domino after another, I just, it took me almost two years before I figured out how to say no, how to take just a, enough charge of myself that I could function as an adult human being. Um, and from there, you know, able to build, 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 and um, build a beautiful life. But, uh, well, glory to God for that. Definitely glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Did, did your parents ever, are they still alive and have they ever realized yeah. their role in what happened to you? And do they now believe you? Yes, they do. My parents are both still alive. They're quite old and they feel terrible about what happened at Hepsi the house. And, you know, they were lied to, they were told you know, it was something completely different than it was. And they were told by Ron Williams that I wanted to stay there. And, um, I, you know, I had to write flowery letters home and they. That's sick too. They make you write letters under duress. Oh yes. Yes. And and the letters sound. It seems like there should be, 
Yeah, it seems like there should be some kind of legal action taken against them for things like that. When you're a minor child yeah. and you're being, you're somebody's lying to the parents saying you want to still be there. You're really being held captive, and he's profiting off of it because they're paying yeah. for you to be there every month, right? Absolutely, yes, yes. Unbelievable. Plus, he brings in lots of money and donations for us being there, and then he feeds the scraps. You yeah. know. Because it's such a godly cause. Right. I heard someone saying that they were eating slop, and yeah. up on the balcony, the Ron Williams and his wife were eating, like, you know, barbecue and, and yeah. laughing about, you know, that they were having all this nice cookout up there. And, right. And I mean, the women that are there, I mean, it's hard for me to understand women not having a natural affection, but it's, it's more so and more now. It's easier to understand now because we see more of it. But back in the 80s, as far as the women, um, how did they treat the girls and how how can they get that way? Um, the, the staff ladies treated us with utter harshness. They were like commandants in a concentration camp. When we come back, Susan will describe how she was treated by the women of Hepzibah House. And thank God we'll learn about how God has allowed her to use her experience to try and help other ladies who have been abused and also what we can do to help. We'll be right back. Truth Dealer Radio. Truth Dealer Radio. No matter what time zone you're in, it's Truth O'Clock. Since 2016, KJV Prepper has been providing quality, original Christian apparel and gear that will witness to non-believers and encourage believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. All designs are original and all apparel is printed here at the KJV Prepper Workshop in beautiful upstate New York. Visit KJVPrepper.com for effective Christian apparel worn to worn. Praise God. Welcome back to Truth Dealer Radio. I do want to share a coupon code with you for 20% off. Use the code VIGILANT2019. VIGILANT2019. You'll get 20% off kjvprepper.com. Before the break, we heard from Susan. She was beginning to describe how the women in the Hepzibah house treated the girls, some as young as 12. And we're just going to pick up where we left off. Um, the the staff ladies treated us with utter harshness. They were like commandants in a concentration camp. Utter harshness, dragging girls across the floor with by their hair, shoving girls into a shower and scrubbing them down, um, screaming at them and calling them names, um, beating them with boards until they were bloody. You know, um, just and and everything was derogatory and everything was cruel and everything was harsh and. Ron Williams would praise them. He'd say, oh, we get a new staff lady in here, and she wants to be nice. She wants to be kind to these girls. Takes her about six months to learn how to be a good, mean mama, and that's a quote. And then he would say, you know, you got to start looking at things the way they are instead of the way polite society wants you to be kind and sweet. you got to be a good, mean mama, he would say. Unbelievable. Yeah. And this man is still there. Yes. Yes. Is he in his 80s? I think he's near 80. And his son is in his 60s, probably? His son is my age almost exactly. So he, I'd say he's 54. That's very inappropriate, too. Yeah. I, I was never disciplined by him when I was there. Um, by the time, you know, once he was grown and married, I think he did participate, but... When he was a teenager, when I was there, he didn't. Okay, and as far as Ron, that's the father. Mm -hmm. Is he also the pastor? He used to be. He used to be the pastor of Believer's Baptist, but he turned that over to his son about 20 years ago, I think, 15 years ago. Okay, and he... And he's the one who administered the, when, when the people were using the boards, was it always the ladies or was it also sometimes Ron Mm -hmm. himself? Ron Ron Williams beat me. They'd pull your skirt up. Two ladies sat on you and he would beat you. And sometimes it was the staff ladies too. And sometimes it was Mr. Kagan or Mrs. Kagan, but yeah, he beat me quite a few times, many times. Sometimes just for 
not answering correctly or rolling your eyes or what what was the reason? They didn't like the look on your face. Honestly, um you uh didn't work fast enough. Um the rules were so minute. Um You never knew when you were going to get punished then. Right. Uh, the biggest thing that I was paddled for consistently was my hair didn't want to hold a curl. I had very fine straight hair and I'd set it up in rollers and then by the time we got to church or to the especially Wednesday night service, it would be straight, and I would be paddled for that. That's but unbelievable. I wasn't paddled for my hair not curling. I was paddled for disobedience because I was told to have curly hair. <laughs> that is so psychotic and, yeah. and evil. I got paddled at least once a week for that my entire 29 months. And, um, you know, I remember one time <laughs> I'd been at half of the house for several weeks, several weeks, and I got called down to the blue room, and I go down there, and Ron Williams is standing there with a paddle, and I just burst out in tears, and I'm just sobbing, and I said, I don't understand. No matter how hard I try, it just can't be good enough, and he laughed, and he said, that's the point, Susie. Hmm. That's the point. And going back to what we were talking about, he's not teaching anyone the true meaning of God's grace. No, no. I mean, he taught no. you the point for the wrong reason. No, exactly. None of us can be good enough for God, but that you're, he's, he's become God now. Mm-hmm. You can't be good enough for him. Because if he's the one dishing out this punishment, which is not spoken of in the scripture, right. because... Giving giving a child correction and discipline is supposed to happen by the parents, period. Yeah. There's nothing in the Bible that says a different person is supposed to correct a child. And then you get into this, it's a whole other ballgame with what age do you transfer that into a different kind of discipline? Because as a parent, you know, there is a stage where you don't do that anymore. You know, no matter what your feelings are with different kinds of punishment, you don't do it till they're 16 and 18. That's ridiculous. Right. Right. My children started to behave, but sister, I mean, praise the Lord, because the Bible is true. By the time they're three years old, they know how to obey. And mm-hmm. they, you don't have to, you don't have to repeat these things very often. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point in God's word. That is merciful. And then they, they learn that there's a consequence for sin and then when they're older, they understand that what a consequence is, and they have respect. But I mean, what this man is doing, it's just abuse. It's it just is. abuse for yeah. the sake of abuse for power. He loves power, and he likes to abuse girls like a big tough guy. And mm-hmm. it makes me really, it makes me really upset. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not getting you upset. Well, no, I. It's nice to hear somebody who gets upset about this. You know, I mean, we're charged with taking care of people. And these are... What can we do? What, what can, can we, we do? <laughs> petition, write, write to Dave Wolkins, who's Ron Williams' best friend, or a close friend. He's a state rep in that district. Well, that's probably how he gets his cover. Yeah, I think. Right. Um, tell people you doing you doing a story on this is very helpful. But I will um, put this podcast also on YouTube, and you know, and t- so maybe some people will hear it and share it. And then it's it's a great thing about social media. Social media can be used for good or bad. And I really have been blessed by how God. I'll, I'll hear from people that, you know, somebody shared something and somebody else shared something and then it gets to somebody and you'll you'll hear back from people that uh, something really blessed them or that helped them. Um, People get saved. So social media can be great for sharing and getting the truth out there. And people just need to be warned. When I started to learn about this, I was so disgusted that, I mean, it's been bothering me ever since. I, I can't. Thank you for that. I think about it often, and um, we were going to do this interview last year, yes. and you were very busy, and, and I'm kind of glad we had to put it off, because it just it's so much for me to mm-hmm. um, take in that I don't know where to start with it, but I just felt that having you on would be good, because the truth needs to get out there, and I'm very sick and tired of the self-righteous Baptists pointing the finger at the Catholics 
when they have a problem in their own circle that's not being fixed, it's not being addressed or even acknowledged, and that needs to change. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we need to pray about that. And I just saw a story yesterday um, from the Houston Chronicle about hundreds of um, abuse cases, unfortunately, in the Southern Baptists with so-called youth pastors. It's another thing that's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, Abusing girls sexually and other ways. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. It's it's a... the, The system itself has to be broken or else these kinds of environments would not be created right and i don't care what church it is for you to send a kid to a place like that whether you knew what it was or not something's already broken something's already not right with the scriptures when the pastor says hey frank i think we should send your daughter over to hepsba house yeah for an unlimited amount of years here you pay Five thousand. Uh, I don't know what of whatever amount that these people can charge for this whole scheme they have, mm-hmm. but they're making money off it, and they're ruining people's lives. They are, and um, only by God's grace can He restore someone. And I do believe, like what you said, He's He's using you. You were there for such a time as this to be able to come out and help the girls. Um, having been through it yourself, you, you understand and you're able to have compassion and you're, and you're the fact that the Lord has you in the palm of his hand and that you are saved and you are still a Christian, you are able to use all this to, to try and reach people for Christ and praise the Lord for that. Um, it's very inspiring to know that God held on to you all that time. And even though you went through so much confusion and pain, that he was with you. Um, it's just so sad for those that are still there. It is. It is. And every person who's brave enough to speak out and say, you know, eventually, eventually the good men, the good pastors, the good shepherds are going to realize this is a real problem and they're going to find ways to protect their flocks. And part of that is denouncing Williams and his work. You're supposed to judge a ministry by its fruit. I know the fruit. I can give you 250 names. The fruit of Hep's house is rotten. Do you have a website where these testimonies are written down of yes. these other ladies that you've been able to contact over the years? Yes, hepsandlegirls.com. Well, thank you, Susan. Um, I think we'll wrap that up, and I just want to thank you for coming on Truth Dealer Radio. Um, I want to close with this scripture because this is just what's always on my heart when I hear about Hep Spa House and other places, too. They have ho- homes like this for young men, homes, yeah. whatever you want to call it, camps. Um, and, and I'm not saying that they're all that bad. There may be a situation, because boys and girls are, are quite different, there may be a situation where a guy is of a certain age needs to go somewhere and uh, learn a few things. If it's not abusive, mm-hmm. Mark nine forty two, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And that's what I always think of are the, the words of Jesus when I hear about these places. Um, because these people... Above all, the, the people that are running this place, they're committing grave sins and they're, they're in a lot of danger. And I have a sick feeling that they think that God's going to reward them when they, when they yeah. die. Yeah. And yeah. I think instead, I think what they're going to hear is, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Yeah. That's, that's my instinct. That's my feeling from, you know, or at least knowing the Lord be- and... You know, they're going to be gravely, gravely sad, (laughs) you know? Yes. Thank you for coming on the show, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. And like I said, please share the story, but stop the abuse. Um, Give these girls hope and show them that Christians are not all monsters. Amen to that. And the sad thing is these days there are a lot of tears 
among yeah. the wheat, and there may even be more tares than there are saved. And this is an issue we're going to keep on battling as we get closer in the end times here to the Lord's return. He did say it's going to wax worse and worse and that there is just going to be a remnant. So that problem won't go away. But yes, we do need to stand up and show the lost that we do have compassion and that the real God loves, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the Lord. And as I said, he died for us when we were yet sinners. You don't have to be perfect to come to Jesus Christ. That's the whole point. That is the whole point. <laughs> right. All you need to do is recognize that you are not perfect. You've broken his Ten Commandments. You've sinned against God, and he is there to forgive you. Go to him. And, you know, we're going to have links in the description box with the gospel for people to read more about God and Jesus and, and um, what the Bible really says about him and how he loves you and how he wants to help you and save you. And those of us that have been through hard times as kids— um, it's one of the worst things you can learn about, but we do need to keep praying for those kids, and let's pray for Ron Williams to repent. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks. God bless you. Bye-bye. The website is hepzibahgirls.blogspot.com. H-E-P-H-Z-I-B-A-H dash girls dot blogspot dot com and as my mother likes to say get the kleenex because there are a lot of very moving and powerful stories on that website i suggest you take a few minutes and go there and read about it and share these stories we have a lot of praying to do for these girls for these women and this nation needs to repent This abuse in the name of Jesus Christ needs to end. So I suggest we write to Representative David A. Walkins, W-O-L-K-I-N-S. He's an Indiana Republican, and the link to his information will be in the description box. Let's give him a call, shall we? Let's ask him if he supports child abuse at the hands of his friend, Ron Williams. Thank you for joining us on Truth Dealer Radio. Truth Dealer Radio is listener-supported, and if you are led to support Truth Dealer Radio, there is a way to do that at truthdealer-radio.com. Thank you for listening. I hope you join us again next time. God bless you. Be strong. Truth Dealer Radio. No matter what time zone you're in, it's Truth O'Clock. Truth Dealer Radio. You keep talking about Jesus. Some folks out there just might be listening.